Hello guys and welcome back to my channel for episode 15 of the Tactic Tester. We have already had 14 tactics put to the test with this Arsenal side to see what they can achieve. We've had some fantastic results and we do still have a very, very competitive score at the top of our leaderboard. Today we have a new creator who is going to take on the gauntlet of the Tactic Tester. But before we get into everything, let me remind you guys of the rules. <laughs> Okay then guys, so let's have a quick reminder of the rules of this series. All tactics must have a proven record of success and achievement. All tactics will use the same team and fixtures for this test. That will be Arsenal. No transfers will be allowed to be made in either transfer window by the side. Tactics will be loaded in and the whole season will be simulated in one go. And all points, wins, goals scored and win percentage will be collected and displayed to find the best creator tactic out there. So as I mentioned in the introduction, we've already had 14 creators on the tactic tester. Let's have a look at our current table. The last week, guys, we had FM Stinger on the channel for his second run of the Tactic Tester Gauntlet with his 4-3-3, which produced the best defensive display that we have seen in this Tactic Tester so far, and by a relatively decent margin. Um, his 4-3-3 4-3-3 managed to finish fourth with Arsenal with a total of 71 points, 110 goals, 43 goals conceded, and that win percentage of 67.24%. So he is currently in fifth. Will today's creator knock our man Mike off the top of the leaderboard with his 73.85%? The only way to find out is to get into things, and let's introduce today's creator. So then guys, we are back in game. We are back at Arsenal yet again for another edition of the Tactic Tester. Today's creator is a close friend of mine. I speak to him on the regular. His name is Jay Credo. I will be leaving all the links to his channel and all his socials, etc. down in the description below. He's on YouTube, he's on Twitch, he's on Twitter. Make sure you head over to all those. Give him a sub on YouTube, give him a follow on Twitch and, uh, uh, and Twitter and make sure you uh, do, do all that. He's a great guy, passive, uh, massive in the community, sorry. Uh, really do uh, appreciate everything that he's done for me. Um, so it's only right that we get him on to the tactic tester and his tactic if we go into the tactics section here it is it's a variation of a 4-3-3 again and he's named it shake your tiki tackers or tiki tack sorry um looks like a nice little shape that he's got here i'm not going to go into it in too much detail started with the attacking mentality is the first thing that i noticed actually looks really really positive um this is kind of similar to what stinger did in terms of shape obviously the roles are vastly different um, it should suit Arsenal this. Obviously, Stinger had a good performance defensively, so I wonder if this one will do the exact same with the three in the central midfield sort of areas. In terms of the roles, he's got a sweeper keeper on defend, wing backs on support on both sides. That's what I use in my um Pentagon save on the channel. You should go and check that one out. One central defender on defend, one ball playing defender is interesting. A DLP should suit Arsenal down to the ground. Advanced playmaker alongside a Mazala. That's going to be interesting to see what actually happens with this pairing. Um, I think they could potentially get caught out on, on the counter. Maybe. We will see. An inverted winger on the right-hand side on support. An inside forward on the left on attack. That is perfect for Aubameyang. And then an advanced forward up top. Again, another perfect role for Lacazette, who loves the bang in the goals in this series. So we will, as we always do, hit that quick pick button just to give you guys a flavour as to who's roughly going to be playing where. We've got Leno in goal. The defence that kind of automatically comes up now if you've got a back four is Bellerin holding Gabriel and Kieran Tierney. Xhaka is that deep line playmaker. Does Granite Xhaka have the ability for this? He's got 18 passing. Maybe I sleep on Granite Xhaka. Hmm, 18 passing, 18 vision for a DLP. I think that's pretty good. Um, Danny Sabalos is the advanced playmaker, uh, freeing up Thomas Partey to be a Mazala, which I actually think is where he would be very well suited. Very good going forward and back, forward and back. I think he could be a very, very good Mazala. Saka coming in on this right-hand side. Obviously, you could replace him with um, the likes of um, Nicolas Pepe. Aubameyang on that left-hand side forward, as I said, that is perfect for him. And then, obviously, Lacazette up top on his own. I am confident of Lacazette bagging at least 25 goals. So this is where we are. This is the team. This is the shape. 
Let's simulate the season and find out how this tactic of shake your tiki tacks gets on. So then guys, we are back at the end of the season and I can see that Arsenal did finish in third with 83 points. So they were a little bit of a ways off from Liverpool and Manchester United. 10 points behind those guys who did finish on 93, but a nice little buffer. Um, six points down to Man City into fourth and then 10 points down to Chelsea in fifth. This, this has actually performed pretty well, I must say. What else can I see from this starting page? Lacazette was the top goal scorer with 29 is interesting. Told you we get over 25. Um, highest average rating is uh, Pepe 7.25. It's interesting that Pepe's actually turned up in this save. Um, he doesn't always do that. So it's interesting to see how he's got on. Uh, Willian comes in with the most assists with 14. Uh, most player of the matches awards. Also Willian with 9. Um, 10 yellow cards apiece for Gabriel and Granite Xhaka. And there's no surprise there with Xhaka getting 10 yellow cards. And no red cards. That is very, very interesting because there's always at least one. Usually Xhaka or David Luiz. Evidently not this time. So let's jump over to the competitions tab and take a look at how we got on. So let's start on the right hand side. Runner up in the community shield. Losing to Liverpool. No shame there. Knocked out in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup by Bournemouth. Um, obviously Bournemouth in this are a championship side. So that's a little bit of a disappointing one. Um, did manage to get to the semi-final though. Runners up of the FA Cup as well. Oh, what a season this could have been. What a season this could have been. Knocked out in the second um, knockout round of the Europa League by Marseille. A Marseille one of these teams that, and that dropped down out of the Champions League? Yeah, they are. One of those teams that dropped down out of the Champions League. We will get into the schedule very soon but yeah and then obviously finishing third in terms of the premier league um i actually think that's uh, arsenal fans would you take that as a season runner up in the fa cup runner up in the community shield semi-finals of the carabao and third in the premier league obviously it'll get you back into the champions league which is one of the main objectives for arsenal right now um i think that's done pretty well let's go into the squad and we'll take a look at things here so in terms of appearances who is the most appeared player no surprises it does come in as leno um then gabriel then lacazette then william then abamyang that's quite interesting obviously no major injuries there abamyang did only play 46 um interesting to see in terms of top goal scorers obviously we know lacazette is top with 29 we've also got abamyang with 22 uh william with 12 that's a very good season for William. 12 goals, 14 assists. How Arsenal fans would be screaming for that in real life. Uh, nine goals and 11 assists for Nicolas Pepe. Uh, nine goals and three assists for Saka as well. In terms of the assist leaders, though, William is top with 14. We've got Pepe and Bellerin both on 11. A lot of attacking intent coming down this right-hand side then by the looks of things. And we've got Aubameyang with eight. Kieran Tierney with seven. Granit Xhaka chipping in with six as well. Um, and then Lacazette with six as alongside, who's that? Maitland Niles. So yes, definitely attacking down this right-hand side then, guys. Um, all in all, I think this is a good season. Let's get into the analyst report and take a look at how it's got on in certain situations. Um, so in terms of its general performance then, guys, in terms of goals per game, it's doing better than the Premier League average. Same with expected goals per game. Goals conceded per game is doing better there as well. Um... Shots per game was higher. I think pretty good. Performing statistically above average, which is good. Concedes fewer goals per 90 minutes than the average and finds the target with a relatively average number of shots. Not, not the best description there. Okay, so let's have a look at the attacking efficiency. This is always a good tail of the tape to see how you're getting on. So, conversion rate of about 13% off of 14 shots per game, which is pretty good. We manage more shots per match than the average. And we're clinical than a lot more teams. Um, only one more team is clini more clinical than Arsenal in this save. And that is Wolves. Um, in terms of defensive um, efficiency then. Uh, our defensive statistics are very interesting. We face fewer shots per game than the average. And we can see fewer goals than would be expected from the number of shots we face. So again, I think this 4-3-3 with the sort of defensive player. Or I know it's a DLP in this instance. But the, like, the, the sort of sitting DM. Um, regardless of what role they're playing, definitely does make a big difference. So opposition conversion rate is just over 8% off of just over 8 shots per game. Um, and obviously, as it says here, we can see fewer goals than expected from the number of shots that we face. So I imagine this, this side hasn't conceded an awful lot of chances or at the very least goals. Um, so this is the 4-3-3 DM wide then for the last 50 matches. 
it's created a positive advantage of 37 clear cut chances um, creating a chance every 45 minutes and a chance against every 70 and obviously has been used for 4712 minutes in terms of formations faced it's done really well against the four uh four two three one which again is a very very popular formation in this year's game and it's done pretty well on average against absolutely everything with the exception of an act of a basic four four two still creates a chance every 43 minutes though just it concedes a chance every 36 so that's very interesting working against a flat 442 um other negative performances just against the 424 um no chances created chance against every 22 minutes i'm very intrigued to see who played that that'd be very interesting so previous match analysis we don't really need to take a look at this let's get into the schedule and see how we actually got on throughout all the competitions that's something i forgot to do earlier I have a regular run of this um and I've popped it up here. So, started the season with that 2-0 defeat to Liverpool in the Community Shield. Um, goals for uh, Mohamed Salah. Two goals for Salah. Not as tightly fought as some of the others that we have seen on this save. Starting the season superbly, though. Winning out in terms of September. And remaining unbeaten in league action. Good Lord, where is the first time that they drop points? Man City just after Christmas. They must have been absolutely flying some massive results in here um let's have a look the 4-0 against Wolves is a very very good result 4-1 against Southampton beating Palace 2-0 against Spurs nice beating Villa as well this is a nice little run here obviously there's some Europa League games in here I will admit uh beating Spurs 5-1 um that's a massive result beating Chelsea 4-0 in the Carabao Cup quarter final again another massive result and as you can see guys not a lot of goals conceded here then we move further down so we move into December, as we said, beat Man City 3-0 on Boxing Day, which is nice, and then lose the return fixture at the Etihad 1-0. Um, then we get into a relatively patchy January, as you can see. There is that loss to um, Bournemouth in the Carabao Cup semi-final. It would have been interesting to see who gets into the final. Liverpool beat Bristol City. Ouch, pain for me as a Bristol City fan. And then Liverpool absolutely batter Bournemouth 5-0 to win that one. No surprises there. So beat Gillingham in the FA Cup third round. That's a nice draw. In the fourth round of the FA Cup, they faced Bristol Rovers, the team that I used to work for. And um, Credo's a Plymouth boy, so playing some of the local Southwest teams for him would have been relatively interesting. Um, then we move into February. So this is where the Europa League sort of ticks up a notch. Beat Liverpool in the FA Cup 2-0 as well. Two goals inside 10 minutes from Lacazette. That's amazing. Um, in the FA Cup. Obviously, we know they are runners-up, so we will get to that one in a minute. They face Dortmund. Jesus, Dortmund in the first round of the Europa League. Obviously, they would have dropped out of the Champions League. They've won 1-0 in the away leg, winning 2-0 in the home leg. Absolutely smashing it. Then they take on Marseille, another team that has dropped out of the Euro uh, Champions League. Sorry, Win the home leg 2-1 and then lose the away leg 3-1. Um, 105th minute goal in extra time over in Marseille as well. Followed up with a 1-0 loss to Liverpool in the Premier League as well. That's a tough one to take. Then we move forward towards the end of the season. Then nice wins against Burnley. Uh, they beat Derby 4-0. This is a nice easy run in the FA Cup, barring the Liverpool game. Uh, and then they have Fulham in the semi-final, which they beat as well. Nice set of results here. Unbeaten in April. This is where things usually start to unravel for most formations and most shapes. Um good results into may until we get into that absolute slog some of these fixtures have been moved liverpool isn't usually the penultimate game of the season but some of these fixtures have obviously been moved for cup games um beaten brighton beaten villa beat everton 5-2 beat chelsea 1-0 as well with a tomori own goal um then man city in the fa cup final losing 3-1 in that that is very unfortunate goals from aguero and own goal and then Ruben Diaz doing the job for Man City. Drawing 0-0 with Liverpool there at Anfield. No shame in that. And then unfortunately losing 1-0 to Manchester United at Old Trafford to close out the season. But it wasn't enough for United to clinch the title. So I've gone through all the results. Let me get my calculator out guys and we'll see where Crudo's tactic lands on our leaderboard.
So then guys, we are back with the leaderboard and Jay Credo finds himself in third of 15 creators. So very, very impressive from him and his shape there with his 4-3-3. Obviously he won no trophies, finished third inside the Premier League with 83 points, um, which is a decent points return as well. 117 goals scored, just a 41 goals conceded against. I did say this looked pretty good defensively. 2.02 um, .02 goals per game with a win ratio of 68.96%. So he's done very, very well there. And I must admit, I do like the fact that the top five positions in terms of where they finished in the Premier League, Mike was first, GYRFM second, J Credo third, uh, pressing forward or DC in fourth, and then Pav in fifth. I love that that runs from one to five. That makes me so happy in my OCD. But there we go. Let's carry on. So then guys, there we have it. That is another creator who has run the tactic test of the gauntlet. That is 15 that we've had so far. Obviously, the leaderboard only shows the top 10 in the series so far. If you think you can break into that top 10 or you even think you can knock Mike off the top of our leaderboard, do let me know. Get in touch with me in the comment section down below or on social media. All my links are down in the description as well. Do fire me a tweet. Let me know if you think your tactic is the bee's knees and we'll get it running on the tactic tester. That is where I'm going to leave things for today, guys. Thank you again to Credo for the tactic. Make sure you go and check him out. Um, and also, if you are enjoying this sort of content, don't forget to drop a like on today's video and subscribe if you are new around here for daily football manager content. I'll be back tomorrow when I actually start my new FM09 save with Arsenal. So make sure you come back and you do check that out. But until then, guys, take care and I'll see you next time.